Hello and welcome to this One Thing, a daily video devotional coming to you from First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. And together we'll be looking at one text and choosing one thing for you to consider. And, and we hope that you find this a thought-provoking, encouraging part of your day. Last night, the current Vice President, Mike Pence, and Vice President hopeful uh, Kamala Harris took the debate stage in what all agree what was a far more civil affair than what we witnessed a week ago. Now, towards the end of the evening, as the two debated issues surrounding law enforcement, race, and civil unrest, a housefly landed on the head of the vice president and stayed there for about two minutes. Now, this occurred at, at approximately 10 p.m. And by 10.30, there were reportedly more than 100 Twitter account profiles for the fly. That's in less than 30 minutes. That's not how many tweets there were about the fly. That, that number is far, far greater. But, but rather, profiles created for the fly. What does that say about our collective attention. As the two candidates discuss an issue that has led to both peaceful and violent protests across the country, it, it seems as, as though the fly was the takeaway. This, this attention deficit, shall we say, is, is not uniquely left or right. Uh, a, a 2019 Pew Research poll indicated that 28% of Americans often get their news from social media and that 27% sometimes get their news from social media. Uh, taken together, that's more than 55% of people in this country getting their news from social media, an outlet which values response over content. The algorithms you see, which, which dictate what social media content you see, are not driven by accuracy or value of content, but rather how it calculates, based on your former online behaviors, you will respond to it. Or rather, what will elicit response from you. And, and that tends to be content, which, which, which tends to the extreme, or in the case of the fly, the ridiculous and not the truth. And this, at the very least, is concerning. Our scripture today from the Gospel of Luke is interestingly appropriate. Here we find Jesus in chapter 7 having dinner at the house of a Pharisee, a, one of the Jewish religious leaders. And, and while he is there, a woman who the writer says lived a sinful life, enters the room. This woman, we learn, is, is known in this city to be a sinner. And in this context, it, it probably means she was a prostitute, though we cannot know that for sure. What we do know is that the nature of her sin was very public and known to many. And her presence in the house of a Pharisee, in the house of, of a religious leader, would have, would have added uh, tension and discomfort to the room. Have you been in that type of social, social situation before where, where someone who doesn't belong enters the room? Or, or maybe you've been that person where when entering you feel all eyes on you seemingly questioning and judging your very presence there. This unwelcomed woman proceeds to kneel at, at Jesus' feet and she washes his feet with her tears and, and pours perfume on them, this act of, of extravagant love. And the Pharisee, perplexed, thinks to himself, this, this sinner, how can Jesus allow this sinner to treat him in this way. Jesus goes on to tell a parable saying, if, 
If two people are forgiven a debt, one who owes a great amount and another who owes a small amount, who in the end is more grateful? And the Pharisee answers, the, the one who owed the great amount. Jesus responds saying, you are right. And he goes on to explain, great forgiveness necessitates a response of great love and turns to the woman and says, you are forgiven. Hear that, great forgiveness necessitates a response of great love. What a powerful message. It's forgiveness that heals, not retaliation. It's forgiveness that restores. Forgiveness and love are intertwined, Jesus says. And how do the people respond to that message? How do you respond to that message? Do you know what the people say? Here in, in verse 49, we read, But those who were at the table, but those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? They miss it. They get distracted by the proverbial fly in the room. Who is this that forgives sins? Friends, as we barrel towards election day, do not be distracted by the flies because here's the one thing. We need to begin forgiving one another. More hate, name-calling, and vitriol are not the solution because it is forgiveness that heals, not retaliation. It is forgiveness that restores, not humiliation. Because forgiveness and love are intertwined. Friends, be safe.